We want to begin, uh, Keanu, by talking about the initial inspiration for the film. We all know that you have an interest in and knowledge of martial arts cinema um, through the Matrix trilogy and other films, but why go to China to make this film? What was the, why was that important? Uh, it goes back to uh, my uh, relationship and friendship with Chen Hu. Uh, we had worked together on the Matrix trilogy. Um, he was part of the action team and he worked uh, uh, with training me and, and helping me with all of the uh, martial art, movie, movie kung fu and wire work. Um, we became friends. As the years went by, we spoke about uh, wanting to work together. Uh, we spent a couple of years developing a script. Um, he had a producer he was working with who introduced me to um, Han San Ping at China Film Group in 2007. We spoke, I said we might have a story coming. He was like, okay, let's call me when you do. We finally had a script that was, I felt, um, a first draft. Um, by that time, once we got to the first draft, it became a story that I thought I was going to act in, but ultimately felt like I wanted to direct. Um, I asked Tiger if that was okay, and he said yes, and I said, thank you very much, let's go do this. Um, the idea of doing this film, I was, I was, it was a nice feeling, but then it was also, how can this happen? Um, and I had been working with uh, Limor on a few pictures, and I thought she was and is the producer who can pull off this never been done before um, expedition. And uh, so that's, and then, and then we started to, well, I'll let you speak about the rest, but that's, that was the introductions, and then, um, and that's how it began. Lamour, we know that uh, the systems are different, the process is often different when you go to shoot in China, the expectations on the part of both the Chinese side and the, the Western side are often different. How did you go about navigating that? Can we begin breaking it down from the time you had a script and you began to, to establish relationships with, say, the China Film Group? How do you actually get started? Um, the first thing that I learned very quickly um, is that you have to show up. Uh, Chinese, uh, um, specifically China Film Group, um, they would like to be, and, and rightfully so, respected and how they do things, and um, and I made the pilgrimage to Beijing quite often, to um, sometimes, you know, most of the time with Keanu, and uh, sometimes by myself, um, just to kind of show up and show that we're there, we're serious, and um, in any film, I believe that momentum is always key, um, and I wanted to create that momentum for them. I wanted China Film to feel that we're going no matter what. And we were scouting and we were doing things and everybody was like, oh wow, this movie's happening, even though... Even when it wasn't? Even when it wasn't. <laughs> but they all knew we were scouting, we were all over the place. And uh, he known, you know, so I wanted to keep creating that. And um, they had great faith in Keanu as a filmmaker. They were honored that he was coming to make a, a film um, the fact that he was coming back to work with his um, stuntman in The Matrix was, uh, and a promise to his Chinese brother was a big deal for them. So um, all of this together, I kind of realized that I have to, um, I'm a guest in, in their world, um, so I have to adapt to that at the same time um, with a lot of smile. <laughs> I would be like, yeah, but you know, we, we do have to do things our own way. And they're like, yeah, we want to learn. And that's how it all evolved. So how did that work? You have a certain way, you've produced films before, of course, you have a certain way of working, you're bringing in some people who are uh, uh, people you've worked with before, but you're bringing them into a system where they also have their own way of working. How do you actually navigate that? You learn each system. Um, but the one thing we all know is that making movies is a very diverse I'm technically challenged. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, a movie is a movie. I mean, the grip trucks are there, the camera is there, the food is there, the actors are there, hair and makeup is there. It's, it's all the same. It's just how you go about it is different. So um, both Keanu and I actually took great length to learn um, how these guys work, how these guys work. Um, uh, our DP was the only American that it was just basically, um, right? 
Elliot. All of your, your other you keys were Chinese as well? Um, the production designer was Japanese, but everybody else was Chinese. And, and the production and the costume designer, but all of his department was Chinese. Now, within China, there is all kinds of, like, there are Hong Kongese and the mainland Chinese, and then there's the Taiwanese, and then there's all of that. But um, he, Keanu was the, the driving force of it all. Everybody felt um, 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 some sort of their own little ownership about their contribution to his first film. And that's back, united us. I want to go back to the screenplay for a second because I know that screenplays have to go through a vetting process when you're working in China. Um, how did that work? At what point do you show it to, was it, is it the China Film Group or SARF who, who has to approve? Yeah, um, yeah once I uh, showed the script to uh, China Film Group and then they, they, you, do a, uh, you have to do a script process. Then once you finish shooting the film, you have to do a, well, I call it an image process because it's not the same team, uh, I think, <laughs> I've been told. Um, and uh, so yeah, so for Man of Tai Chi, um, you know, I had, uh, we had to make some changes for it. I couldn't have a, the film has underground fighting in it that used to take place in Beijing, um, and they didn't want that to happen. And I had a uh, corrupt police officer in Beijing, and they didn't want that to happen. Um, so what, for me, going through making the film, to me, any adversity or any change or any challenge, people call it, what were your challenges? To me, I call them opportunities. And so in a way, because I w um, had to make these changes, the scope of the film opened. So now the underground fighting took place in Hong Kong, so now I'm in a different city. If uh, it's in Hong Kong, the mainland authorities don't mind. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, it's an autonomous region, is it? Yeah. Uh, that's foreign. <laughs> No, so for, for however we want to get into it, that's what happened. And um, yeah, so for me, the film opened up. And, uh, so, and then in terms of the picture side of it, uh, you know, it's a kung fu film, and, and so uh, they don't have a rating system there. There's no PG-13 or R or anything like that. So um, for us, we had a violence and violent intensity review. So there are a couple of sequences where there used to be 11 punches that went to five punches or from 32 strikes to 17 strikes uh, And you're actually negotiating these like by the number well, I, I didn't I didn't go through the negotiation process I just was um, you know in dealing with blood so my intention was I uh, was hoping to make a PG You know a PG 13 film that was my paradigm um, uh, and then once we got there, uh, there was a little, a little stuck out into the R world, I guess. Um, so, uh, again, I still, for me as a filmmaker, it didn't change the story that I was telling. It kind of uh, took some of the, uh, a couple of the levels out, but uh, it didn't, um, it was okay. Um, can we talk a little bit about money? Um, I'm curious, and you tell us as much as, or as little as you want to, but as much, let's hope, in terms of uh, the budget for the film, where the different components came from, how much China Film Group is going to step up with, how much Wanda is going to step up with, just in terms of, you know, ballpark proportions. No problem. How, how you put it together. Um, well, the one thing that we did once the script, let me start from the filmmaking side. What Keanu needed for this movie, um, there were a lot of fights. And, a, and fights take time to shoot. And even when we did end up with a shooting schedule, Master Wu Ping would say, not enough time, not enough time, not enough time, because when they shoot Kung Fu movies in China, Tiger, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, it's seven days and it goes on for, I don't know, 150 days. Seven days a week, 150 days. These, they live in hotels, they just get up, they work, they come back, you know. Uh, we didn't have that because we also wanted, uh, Keanu really wanted to shoot s things certain ways. We had two cities to go to. We had to, a big, like, police story. Um, um, Hello? Okay. So, uh, so to make a long story short, we landed on a budget number that we thought would be at appropriate uh, risk for the investors, because we were mindful of that, at the same time giving us whatever, how mu however much we needed, and that was $25 million. 
Now, $25 million in China goes a long way. We did shoot for 103 days. Well, he says 103, I say 105. <laughs> and, um, um, but a lot of it, and you visited our set, uh, so a lot of it went for the fights. They took, they took time, and, uh, and that was, um, and the way Keanu was shooting them was not the traditional way. We shot with um, a camera that was brand new, the Alexa Studio, and Hawk and Amorphic. So our ambition cinematically was pretty big. So the budget had to be that. So in terms of who stepped up to the table, um, China Film and Wanda um, came in with 15, and Universal and Village Roadshow came in with 10. And um, that we thought would be the formula that would make everybody, um, and it made everybody happy. Everybody signed up. Everybody thought it was a, you know, a good, a, a good um, and the partnership was excellent through the production and everything, so. Great, thank you. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the shoot and I guess about um, merging the crews, uh, both the, the shooting styles, the uh, communication issues, if there were any. Um, and I know that productions are done in a different way sometimes in China. You mentioned seven days a week. I don't think that flies. No, so we didn't. We, we, you didn't we, shoot we, seven days a no, week. No, we fought. We fought for five, but we ended up doing mostly six. And on the seventh day, we would have script meetings and pass out. <laughs> so, um, but um, in China Film Group, I have to be honest, um, some of the production people in there were like, why are, you sh why are you paying so much for food? Why are you, you know, why are you not working seven days? Why are you, and I explained to them that, you know, we're trying to split a little bit of a difference because we do have white people around. <laughs> <laughs> they can't do that. That's what they call us, the Caucasians. Um, any other differences or just points of, of, uh, of negotiation that you had to deal with in terms of what you were used to shooting in the West and what you were confronted with shooting in China? I think it's, uh, Keanu will have a good take on that uh, in terms of how he, his process and how it affected him because he, he had all these people around him constantly. Um, Chinese, Japanese. Yeah, but I mean, that's that's. I don't know. I mean, it's all about communication, and and um, you know, I really had great translators, or um, you know, as long as the intention is to communicate, to really understand what are you saying, and and uh, are you understanding what I'm saying uh, by any means, then that other doesn't really matter. Um, you know, I had great support from Limor in terms of. Uh, making sure that that was available, um, and, and yeah, and yeah, well, that goes with the actors, you know, in a sense of just how, how do you feel about this? What do you think about the dialogue? What do you? Um, One of the things I've heard is that in China and other parts of of East Asia, South Korea as well, the director has a kind of an absolute authority that you don't always have in Hollywood. Nobody's going to come and give you right. notes no. on set. That's true. <laughs> I've heard that as well. Yeah, I mean, that was the, the remark is that, uh, yeah, and sometimes people say, you know, you have to pretend that you know what you never let them know that you don't know what you're doing. Um, and that was a challenge. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Tell me more about that. Well, because I didn't want him to know that they don't know what they're doing. So there's a lot of times where, for example, the set that you visited, visited right, it was a temple. And... Um, they had no idea the uh, Hong Kong grips and the, they've never, just never done this before. Our American DP wanted to cover the entire temple with this, what would you call it? Silk. Uh, silk rig mm -hmm. that would help us with the sun so we can keep, there was a 10 day shoot of this fight and the continuity and all of that. They have never done this before, this big. So um, we got in um, our helper, our, our uh, emergency 911 were Australians. And uh, we brought in a grip from Australia and we just did like this rig that we designed and the, they were into it. They were like learning a lot. But he didn't know that we had no clue up to like two days before we had to put it up that <laughs> well, how the hell are we gonna do that? But um, you kind of knew, right? Yeah, come on. 